Hey, how's it going guys? My name is Sean Mercado, aka Merc. I am the DJ instructor here at PeerMind. I teach DJ 101 and 110. Um, so today I'm just going to do a quick run through of Recordbox. Recordbox is a, is a software that we use hugely in DJ 101 class. Um, it is incorporated with CDJs and a lot of other Pioneer equipment and it is just an awesome program for storing your music and getting prepared for DJ sets or uh, mixes that you want to record or, or anything that involves DJing. So just to run through some of the, some of the basic features of Recordbox, on the left hand side over here we have our collection. That's going to be your main library where all of your music is stored. Underneath that you have playlists. That's where um, if I drop down this little menu you will see um, a bunch of past gigs that I've had and just playlists that I set up. Under that is iTunes in case you want to bring in tracks from there. Explorer so you can search your computer for tracks. Devices will pop up any USB sticks or hard drives that you plug in. And Histories is just going to give you um, history like old playlists and stuff like that that you've created and played. So if I drop down into playlists I will click into uh, the last set that I had in the city at Ruby Sky with Datsik. So um, I've already dropped in one of my my recent tracks that I did um, and I just want to give you guys a quick run through on how memory locations and hot cues work. So basically memory locations, if we go to the top right up here, you can see our, our tabs for memory, hot cue, and info. Right now we're just going to focus on memory and hot cue. So with memory locations, they're kind of used more as um, locators or, or just good ways to map out different parts of your track. So for example, if I wanted to set one, let's say, eight bars into this intro. So um, the first eight bars is kind of just ambient pads and stuff and vocal stuff going on. And then after that is when the kick and the bass jump in and it really starts picking up energy. So um, if I want to grab this kick drum right where the eight bars comes in, I can do so. So I can just go to that point. And you'll notice up here on the left above the waveform, I have quantize on. Now what quantize does is um, even if my needle, the center bar right here, if that's a little bit off, if that's a little bit off of my transient, when I hit Q, Q is going to snap it to my transient and it's just going to kind of clean everything up and keep everything nicely in time and lined up with the transients and um, it's going to keep my looping all clean cut and stuff like that. So we, we want to have quantize on. So now that I've got to this spot, I hit Q, it jumps to that transient and I can hit memory. And now you'll see right up here in my memory bank or my memory tab, it stored it with the exact time that that memory location is at. So I can keep doing that and I can map out different parts of my track. So if I'm gonna go to, let's say the breakdown. Right, right here where this impact hits and the kind of, the sub hit comes in and we go into the breakdown and we can map that out as well. So I'm not directly on the grid on the transient, but once I hit Q, remember since quantize is on, it'll snap to that. So it snaps to the transient and then I just hit memory again. Now it updated and says 34993 or 933. So this is just telling us the exact time that that memory location has been set. So I can keep doing this. I'll do one more just to map out the drop. Okay, so I can just grab this first kick, press Q, memory. Now I've stored those three. If you look in the waveform of the overall track up here, up, up top, the first one is eight bars into the intro, second one is another eight bars after that into the start of the breakdown, and the third one is at the, the first beat of the drop. So I have those three set, I can set seven more, I have up to ten but I just want to jump over to hot cues and show you guys how that works. So with hot cues, think of them more as triggers. If you are into kind of beat juggling or um, triggering stuff on the fly and kind of just doing 
more of a fast paced mixing type, this may be for you. So you only get three banks, but you can do a lot with those three. So you have, you have the opportunity to set a regular hot cue, which is just a trigger from that, that point in the song, or you can set a hot cue loop, which when, when you trigger it, it'll automatically put you into that loop that you set up beforehand. So it's very much like setting up a memory location. So I can go to a spot where, let's say halfway through this drop. Okay, where the, right before that snare hits. I can go here, go to the transient, hit Q, and then I just press A, and it'll store it to that bank. I can also press it down here, doesn't matter. Um, just put it into whichever bank that you want it to go into. So now that's set. If I'm playing the song somewhere, and I hit A, it'll just trigger straight back to that spot. This can be very useful uh, with slip mode on the CDJs. Now what slip mode does is it's a button on the CDJs and it allows you to do looping and build up your loops and do all this stuff to the song, but the needle of where the playhead was or where, where you were playing before c keeps moving in the background. So you can do all this crazy looping and you can start with um, whole note, half note, quarter note, eighth note, and just build up your looping to build tension and as soon as you get out of it it'll jump back to where your, your track would have been playing if you did not loop so it, it just keeps everything perfectly in time and it just allows everything to be smooth and the transitions to be smooth without kind of messing up the timing and jumping all over the place um, so with these hot cues i can put triggers on a piece of a vocal or a cool lead stab or something like that and just trigger them in slip mode and use them more as like little samples and trick like sample pads almost. Um, so to show how to do a hot cue loop, it's very similar. I just have to set my loop first. So I can go to, let's say the second drop. Okay, and I, I'll just set it right on the first transient, the first beat of that drop. My looping section's down here, just keep that in mind. Okay, yeah, so we'll grab that first kick, and let's just set a four beat loop. So we can just click this, our quantize is on, so that loop is gonna be perfectly in, in time. <laughs> Cool. It's a short loop, but it'll do. So we have the four beat loop set, also known as one bar, and we can just click B to jump that into B. Remember, you can just click these ones as well. They are the same. So now you'll notice instead of like A being green, since it's a loop, it is yellow. And up here in the top right corner, it has the loop icon next to it. So we can set another one just to get that ready to go. I'll go down to, let's do something in the breakdown. Perfect, let's grab that little piano section and let's do eight beats this time. Perfect, okay, so this time I set eight beats, just a little bit longer. Um, section just to give it more time to wrap around and, and seem complete. Okay, so I can just, I have that 8 beat loop set, I can just click on C to store it there, and now we're good. So we've set three memory locations and three hot cues. That is one regular hot cue and two hot cue loops, as you can see up here in the top right. So, a normal process of, like, getting ready for sets and, and getting ready to record mixes and stuff like that is getting a bunch of the tracks that you want together, drop them into a playlist, and start doing this. It's, it's great to have prep work done before you actually get into the process of mixing. Um, it just helps to have everything kind of mapped out and ready to go. So now that we've set these for this track, say that we've set memory locations for the rest of our tracks and we kind of have an idea of what we want to do. The playlist is good to go. 
Then you go over here to the left, you click on the name, you right click on the name of your playlist, and you go to export playlist. Now I don't have a drive plugged in right now, but if you had a drive plugged in right now, it would pop up here, you click on the drive, and you're good to go. A reason that this tool is used across so many DJs and across the world is it's just, it allows you to have all of your music good to go, you export it, and then all of all you need is a flash drive or two. It's always to, safe to have two. Problems with a link or problems with the USB hub on a CDJ do occur. It's just always helpful to have two. Um, but that's all you really need. Like nowadays, I show up to a gig, I have my headphones, I have my USB drive, and I'm good to go. So I think that's about it. Next, we will get into mixing harmonically and um, kind of messing with grid to make sure everything's lined up really well with the transients and take it from there. So thank you guys. Bye. Very much like to thank Pyramide for hosting me here once again. Um, I think this institution is really cool and until I came here for the first time, I had never seen anything like it in my whole life. What I think really separates us from other people who teach is that we are outrageously passionate about what we do, and especially in electronic music. Since since coming to Pyramind, I, I've discovered electronic music, and you know, San Francisco being a mecca for underground electronic music opened up so many doors for me and kind of blew my mind. We cover everything from absinthe to contact. When people get to the mind-melting level, uh, we get into modular synthesis. Everything about native instruments, everything about logic synths, down to the, the finest detail. We, we learned it all. The fundamentals of understanding how things work, that's just essential. But then beyond that, there's so much more, and that's where it gets into just a lot of, of the artistic side of like the creative approach of, of why you do something, not just how. There's a lot of schools that just, you know, they focus on the technicality of, of recording music, um, but I wanted something that would foster creativity and, and really helped me develop as an artist as well. Each of our genre-specific programs comes in four levels. There's a basic, an advanced, a professional, and then a master's level. And the master's level is, of course, everything we do. It's the largest and most powerful programs that we can create for you.